I don't know whether you're familiar with New Orleans or not, but I'm going to show you what I was doing down there in this tape. Let you take a, a look at the city, the beautiful French Quarter. If you're a party doll, New Orleans is the place. <laughs> Street. Oh, I love that Cajun music. I love all the music in New Orleans. It's a, it really is a fun place. Uh, if you're not a party doll, there isn't a heck of a lot to do there. There's, there, of course, is the museums. They have a museum. They got an excellent zoo and that kind of thing. But let's face it. I mean, you know, no sense kidding ourselves. This is where it's at. The French Quarter. The food, like Antoine's restaurant. Cause you better you better be prepared to drop about hundred and twenty five dollars for a dinner if you go in there with your spouse but there's lots of other nice little restaurants nice way to get around New Orleans of course is with these little old horse-drawn carriages every every horse has got his own little hat and she takes you down through the quarter uh, on this little tour just a couple of bucks Like I say, it's it, it's a good it's a good ride. You can get some nice pictures from the the horse drawn thing. If you're easily offended by nudity and whatnot, well, you'd you're going to be shocked when you go into the quarter because the place is alive with sex shops and uh, and strip joints. There's no question of that. You can even rent your own little exotic model if you want. Little street vendors abound everywhere. <laughs> You see him shaking his hand there. He wanted his, his couple of bucks. If you don't give it to him, he really raises hell with you. Like I said, the restaurant stall, that's the thing. But we are going to look at some buses. I mean, that's just a little glimpse at New Orleans. Now, down in the quarter, they have to have these little buses. There's a chance. That was a, that was a custom built that you saw going down there. There's no more streetcars in the French Quarter. Look at that guy. Boy, don't you wish you could back up like him? I'm sorry about that. It's a little glitch. But uh, public service uh, has a lot of equipment. And during the rush hour, you don't know what you're going to see out there in the streets of New Orleans. Now, this is the main drag. This is Canal Street. It used to be a trolley car right away. Now it's a bus right away. And they've, like I say, they've got a little bit of everything here. Uh, it's, it's really a fine place to shoot transit coaches. And you can get a lot of really super pictures, too. I mean, RTSs, fishbowls, uh, uh, Grumman's, uh, Metro's, uh, AM Generals, Chances. They're all here. And they've still got elephant ears, as you can see, on, the, on their fishbowls. Elephant ears... Uh, well, I don't know. They, they're part of the industry and part of the history, but they never really did reach me that awful much. Now, this is all down on Canal Street, right at the top of Bourbon, and for all practical purposes, Midtown. 
There she goes. There's, there's a Grumman Metro. Theirs didn't fall apart like New York's did. In the inner city, there are several uh, carriers in town, but the Hotards, above and beyond, own the city. Boy, you're going to see their buses everywhere. They are super, super nice folks. But if you are a jolly trolley, well, let me tell you. This is the, the Charles, the St. Charles line. It's a National Historic Landmark, and uh, it's going to be around. Listen to this guy go by. I definitely suggest you take a ride on the trolleys. Uh, transport in, in, uh, in New Orleans is very, very reasonable. This line goes out, oh, ambles out maybe for about three and a half, five miles, somewhere around there. It isn't too terribly long. Has its own right of way, single track with turnouts, so the cars can get by one another. At the end of the line, though, you're going to be uh, fascinated because there's a lot of feeder buses that come in and put the people on the trolleys. Incidentally, these trolleys are Thomas built. The same people today that build Thomas uh, school buses, they built these cars. They have been rehabbed a thousand times, of course, through the years. There's no question about that, but uh, they are really handsome pieces. Now you can see the end of the line. Oh, uh, I, I had one one fellow with me that was a was a trolley car buff and he was simply a stranger in paradise. Excuse me there for a second. Down here in Charleston, we drink gallons and gallons of iced tea. And uh, of course, you know what that means. Now, at the end of the line here, at the rush hour, they really operate the cars in frequency. As you can see, they're coming there one right after another. It's, it, it really is a nice place to take pictures. Here, we'll let this guy slide by you.
I don't have it on this tape, but the car house is uh, a really a, a nice place. Uh, it, it's about halfway down the line. And I just didn't have the time to get there. Uh, I was there one evening with Larry Placno. Well, Larry is a jolly trolley, to say the least, and uh, he rented one of these cars. And we took it out for a ride. Unfortunately, I did not have my camera with me, my video camera with me that night. It was a lot of fun. But I wholeheartedly recommend, if you go to New Orleans, this is, this is an absolute must. You've got to ride the old Thomas belts. They are handsome, handsome, handsome things. New Orleans Public Service. Well, though, the other big thing in New Orleans well, is the river, the mighty Mississippi. Boy, if you're into ships, is this a place you're going to melt your brain down. You've got them coming and going all the time. The big old paddle river boats that go up to St. Louis and Memphis and everything, the ocean going, because this is a big, big, uh, big port. You'll see ships from all over the world here. I have big containers, a grain ship rather, bulk loader. Now, what you want to do is uh, go spend, uh, I think it was just uh, 50 cents, and uh, ride the ferry boat across the river to Algiers. At the top of the screen, there's a community across the river called Algiers. And that's also another honky-tonk area that's, uh, well, I, I suppose you might say it could be kind of rough over there. You're in, uh, you're in the neighborhoods over there. But this little ferry boat here, that's the one that carries the cars. The people in New Orleans use it all the time. Right at the foot of Canal Street is the ferry terminal. You can't miss it. And... Uh, Again, uh, a good time to, to ride it is during rush hours. Although basically there is no real schedule to, uh, to the shipping. You see the old fireboats here, those are City of New Orleans fireboats. That's deluge. The, the, the river is just so beautiful in itself. And there's no question you must ride this, this Canal Street Ferry. You really should. It is, it's just a heck of a nice little ride. You'll get to see the, the Mississippi River barges. You're not gonna see them anywhere else in the world except here on the Mississippi. Huffing and a puffing, making it in New, New Orleans. Of course, there's a big bend in the river, and it's pretty tough for these boys to, to get around that bend. There's the little passenger ferry. That carries only people, no vehicles. the Captain Tom bound for Memphis. Fuel oil, be there in a few days. Captain Tom. But what I was doing in New Orleans was to photograph the Trailways Convention. Now this is where all of the member
companies converge in one spot and find out what's going on in trailways and have a little fun, just relax. A lot of work is done, but it's not all work, not by a long shot. Now this is when the, uh, the hey, there's John, back that up. That's John Holbein there driving that bus. Yeah, there's John. We were uh, leaving New Orleans and going over to uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, where they were going to have a travel show for all of the uh, the Trailways members. And that's Little Red. Of course, Trailways never ran anything like that. It's one of the old Yellowstone touring cars. Like Alfred Hitchcock, I got to get in my own pictures every now and then. My God, it wasn't that long ago. This was only 83 and I had hair back there. Look at that. There's Marilyn. Marilyn's telling me, you bet you're going to lose your hair someday. Yeah, I did. I got a big old beacon back there. Now, I'm put, thinking of putting a reflector on it. That way I won't get hit at night when I'm out taking night pictures. Although it reflects pretty good now. But the show... Uh, was excellent food and all that good stuff. Uh, all of the various attractions were there to, to acquaint the various trailway member companies. And naturally, there's a brand new eagle there because they wanted the Kerrigan. This was during the Kerrigan regime. Oh, this is cute. Who started the war? That was Frank Zerater on the tee there, uh, and a battery cot blew up and exploded. My God, what a sound. <laughs> it scared the hell out of him. There's Davy Milhauser showing off his fish that he caught. He's a, he's a dear friend, too. Hurry up, I can't hold it much longer. Hold it up higher. Why, are you crazy? Make the fish look bigger. Crazy? I don't have to do nothing now, do I? Just kiss him goodbye. <laughs> Careful, Red, not broken cameras before you. Hey, Bobby Watson. She was in the public relations department. Like I said, it wasn't all work, but... I was here to work. I wasn't here just to have fun. As this, of course, was when the Eagle 10 was, uh, was the queen of the fleet. And that was the high window Eagle. So I was down here to photograph Eagles. That little puppy there only had a few thousand miles on her. was little old Glenn Jupiter. He was he's quite a quite a nice guy. Was during the Kerrigan regime, uh, they kind of spent money like drunken sailors. Went into great ad.